Can I readjust it? Is it in? authorization agreement pre-authorized debt notice to transfer of uh, 5.826 acres from Coolidge Wall. Isn't that two different? Mm -hmm. Aren't those two different items? Yep. Okay. That's why they have those bullets. Excuse me. Um, that's the that's the new cemetery piece that we've talked about forever. Uh, an email from Brad Rury about the capital fund and how to use it. I email from me about the windows that were uh, voted on, uh, the design, and that was the big piece of paper. Email from MSA about the soil remediation and the package bid. Uh, basically, that is where we are contracting with uh, um, oh, I can't think of the name. Uh, the people who are going to do the remediation uh, of the soil. I just sent that in. Shoot, sorry, I can't remember your names. Um, email from uh, Attorney Hayden about Part B reimbursement. So let's find that. Didn't really that way. And that's what we is going to come up in new business? Yeah, it's going to come up somewhere. If you do it in new business. from the association and the rest of the uh, year's meetings so far. Health Department uh, DAC meeting announcement on the 20th. Um, email from uh, R. Taylor about a zoning issue that I reported to Richard Zod. The revised contract for street snow removal from the village of Clifton that we need to sign. Well, 
We voted on our half of it last time we were here. Mm -hmm. And now we're voting on this, or we're not voting on, we are agreeing to their part. They're, they've already voted, they're sending their. It's just the agreement, right? Yeah, their official so contract sign. part. So yeah. we'll sign it. So we'll file and solve. Mm -hmm. It's a word of So that went right by me. We voted on it the last mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah. Remember the one about $50 an hour or whatever it was and material cost? And okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, so there's two of them there. Do we need to sign twice? No. Well, sign, no. Sign that one and then flip a few pages and sign the other one. some vector notice for a fixed cost, which we're not going to do because it's in the so, uh, so those are all of those. All right, then there was additional correspondence that didn't get entered because Mark has been on vacation. One from USDA, uh, our friends, Cindy Cameron and Ashley Kelly, uh, who are falling into the category of thanks for all the additional requirements that you have to fulfill that we didn't tell you about. This is like the third thing that you know we're required to do uh, in order to have gotten that grant. And this one is, well, it's it, initially it's posting that little notice over there on the wall, uh, which is a basically a non-discrimination notice to everyone who uh, comes in contact with it. And she's reminding us that now, uh, to post that if we hadn't already done so, which we have, but additionally, you are required to include the statement in full on all print and non-print materials, including websites, Unless the size of the material is too small to include a statement. Okay. So, we supposedly are required to include this non, full non-discrimination statement on every piece of paper that, and every website page or something that goes through Miami Township. And it's relatively long. It's like four paragraphs. And I don't quite understand it. I mean, I understand it, <laughs> but I just don't understand how we can incorporate that into every piece of paper that goes through this operation. But the short non-description statement says, this institution is an equal opportunity provider. So it goes from five paragraphs, or whatever, to one sentence, to, yeah, a, a, a kind of small sentence. So, I don't know, do we call everything that we do well, uh, I'm interested in learning about the website, <laughs> okay. and I'd be willing to post that one place on the website if you showed me how. Okay, I wish I knew how. And then we could. Uh, I'm still waiting for your bio and picture. No, I got. Oh, I just, uh, I just today took Lamar off and put your name on it, but that's all. I got. Uh, I'm ne negligent in self promotion, uh, but. Uh, seriously, uh, I would think if we just put put this on our website once, in addition would, to all print material. I, I I know that's what they say. Okay. <laughs> and then do the one sentence on all uh -huh. all print material, or on lots of our print material. Yeah. Now I have a question. Yes, sir. Regarding uh, signatures uh -huh. for. Maybe there were three of them. Um, Did you sign two? I signed two. Maybe I missed one. And uh, I missed one. Well, this says date, but then it says Miami Township Trustees. Yeah, that's yeah, that's where we're signing mm -hmm. on this date. Okay. Today. There must be three copies. Maybe there's a cover that said return so many so doesn't matter. Okay. Well, 
So anyway, I don't know what to tell you about that. We'll have to figure out what our actual requirements are going to be. You mean on the non-discriminate? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good faith uh, you know, follow through in a reasonable, in a reasonable way. Okay, I have another correspondence from uh, um, uh, from Dan Montgomery saying I should go ahead and contract with people who I can't remember the name of the person. But that's the official note from him. We also have a correspondence from our prosecuting attorney, Stephanie Hayden, Hayden saying she's no longer going to be our prosecuting attorney. She's moving up in the world, and now she's going to be a magistrate of the uh, Common Police Court as of next month. Doesn't say anything about who's going to replace her, but... That's what I was going to say. My, my question was who's going to replace her. Usual stuff. You finally get somebody broken in, and, mm -hmm. and, they, and they leave. <laughs> right. Uh, I could give that to Margaret, but she's not there. So mm -hmm. We've got a Margaret pile. So we're going to comply with that in full sometime. Okay, there's a meeting announcement for the 343 connector tomorrow that I usually go to. Uh, oh, this is for Daniel. Uh, it's a local AT&T contact information about changing your phone. Apparently this is the dude. For Verizon? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait, access. not for us, I forgot, that's you, that's at and I got a number of uh, Alexis or something like that at the shop. Okay. When I called her twice, she didn't call her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Must be nice. Okay, we also have an invitation. Uh, this is linked to the to the meeting that I went to that I, I told you guys about uh, last meeting, about the pollinator, uh, the transition to eco-friendly land management from the pollinator regeneration project. Um, the presentation was given on February 7th at, at NF Midwest. There's a, a follow-up workshop on March 1st and uh, another presentation. I'm not sure if it's the same one. No, I guess it's not. It's a different one. That evening, so you, uh, there's an 8.30 to 3 p.m. workshop and then a 7.30 to 9 that evening uh, presentation about transition to organic lawn care and organic residential and business property lawn care. And uh, we've had uh, two personal invitations um, for a member of the board to attend both of those, uh, both of those presentations, mm -hmm. including in addition to the one on February 7th, which, as I say, I did go to. So if either of you are interested in going to that, please do. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had a message from hmm. me reminding everybody to RSVP for the engineers' dinner on the 13th. That went to all the Township Association people, including mm -hmm. the legislative alert. Um, this is an information for the, for the uh, Medicare thing. And I'm thinking that's all I have. Any Additional correspondence done from you? Nope. Mark? No. Nope. Good for you. Okay. I'm going to find one thing. Where was the red book? I would love to look at the 343 connector meeting. We'll find out more about it. Okay. Um, and it might be simpler just to show me the paper. I will. I'm not sure. I mean, I certainly encourage your interest. I'm not sure if both of us could go to that meeting just because of the. Right. No, I, I just want to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Not much to it. I mean, it's right. just a notification from uh, uh, Brian. Ash. All right. Now, the uh, 
fire chief is either delayed or won't be with us. We'll get to Daniel in a moment. I decided now that Don's been here a while and got his feet wet and settled into his rocking chair, keeps his legs closed appropriately every every meeting, that it's time to do a little philosophizing, philosophizing mm -hmm. about uh, what Mark Crockett and I feel our role as Township Trustees have been for nearly 20 years. <laughs> okay, well, for certainly 16. Or 16 anyway. My, my ears are open. And if you don't agree with anything, just hit me in the ribs and say, okay. not, not me, buddy. <laughs> But it's easier to do it as a as for two yeah. instead of instead of just for one. Cause, Absolutely. Because our motto has been, I think, uh, that we're kind of like the three musketeers. Our motto being all for one, one for all, mm -hmm. pretty much. And uh, that's I think that's how we worked for for quite a while. We feel that, uh, or we have felt that the role of this body is that of a, a public service, and we are public servants. And basically what we do is we try and do as much as we can for the benefit of the public with what we have. Right. And so in order to do anything, then you have to know what you have. And so we have meticulously over the years um, memorized all these fun, you know, <laughs> expenditure lines. You know, and gone through them Some and the balanced same. them, balanced yeah. them off with and the you, revenue. You actually have memorized them. Yes. And balanced them off with the revenue and kept very careful track of how much we have, how much we're spending, how much we have in reserve, and what our requirements, uh, you know, may be for, for projects for the public good. And I'm just going to remind everyone of some of these projects that we've undertaken over the years. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that I was involved with anyway was the uh, acquisition uh, of the Whitehall Farm to keep it all together in, the, in the 98, 99, whenever that was. Mm -hmm. um, the, the township felt that was a, a, a viable uh, project for, and in the public interest. And we spent about twenty thousand dollars for that, to taxpayer money, and well, maybe in total fifty to one hundred hours of, of volunteer uh, work, going to meetings and, and um, working the you know working the, 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 the money raising arm of it and then going to the uh, the auction. Um, after that, uh, let's see what was next. It doesn't seem like there was. Something between that or, oh, uh, well, we bought, you know, um, conservation easements on, uh, along the land trust for mm -hmm. quite a while, as long as we had the, the disposable income that was provided by the uh, state tax. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent a uh, little in excess of half a million dollars over that period of time. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we don't have that fund stream anymore, but mm -hmm. we were, I think we felt that was in the public good, public benefit to do that. Uh, we uh, acquired ownership of the Grinnell Mill when it was uh, not in the best of shape from Antioch, of course, uh, and, and included that with a 100-year lease on the property that it's on. Um, in subsequent years, they've, they've uh, dissolved the property that it's on and now made it into one big 450-acre chunk, so I'm not really sure you know, how much we control of we have over it, but I guess we really didn't need to go over into the South Glen and do anything over there, but we have like four acres over there too. So anyway, uh, that was a four-year project that the township undertook, of course, with uh, other people, but we put in about 60 plus thousand dollars of township money uh, into that project and easily uh, easily a thousand hours of uh, uh, volunteer labor. Uh, everything from uh, hauling away all the old wood to the pit and burning it, or, or, or digging uh, about 18 inches of uh, <laughs> crap out of the basement mm -hmm. uh, and pulling it up one wheelbarrow at a time, and, and a bunch of other stuff. That and you have pictures, right? Huh? You, you got pictures. Oh, I got pictures. I got all kinds of pictures. 
but we felt that was a worthwhile project, and uh, it's had some bumps along the way, some legal issues that I wish we hadn't have had, but it did. But in the end, I, I still think it's a it's a it's a beautiful building, and I know Mark agrees because he goes there and spends mm -hmm. Christmas with his family mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. every every year or every. Season. It's quite so, nice. The last couple. Yeah. So we did that and uh, spent some spent some hard-earned money doing that. Uh, let's see when then when the, when the uh, Glen Forest Association uh, Cemetery Association decided to dissolve by by law, we had to take over management and ownership of the Glen Forest, and um, so we had to negotiate with the village Yellow Springs as to because half of it's in the village. Um, in the old part anyway, and so we negotiated how we were going to, uh, how we were going to uh, own and operate that, whether it was going to be a, a union cemetery or whether, you know, they wanted to do their part separately or we wanted to do our part separately, and it ended up that since most of their part was in the old section and there really was no uh, active burials in the, that older section, that it would just be cumbersome for everybody to, to jointly do it. So we just said we, you know, we just do the whole thing. And uh, also, at the time, the, the portion of across the street had, had not been uh, developed, I shouldn't say the word developed, but uh, put together. And so we took it upon ourselves to spend about $125,000 of taxpayer money to uh, open up the Glen Forest East uh, to provide additional space for burials, uh, including the Natural Burial Cemetery and the additional Portion, the optional portion, which uh, the option parcel, which we uh, decided to go ahead and exercise the, the right to uh, pick up that option, although it had expired. <coughs> but anyway, so we did that, and that was a substantial amount of time. I don't know, probably spent 100 or 200 hours. Uh, we had to find the contractors to do the, the stone work. Uh, had to find the metal workers to make the, uh, the make the, the fencing and had to design the the, the, the overhead mm -hmm. entrance to both. We uh, decided to use the same entrance for the new cemetery and the older one um, there in the main entrance off of Xenia, off Xenia Avenue. And so uh, and you know that was a that was a pretty big project, but uh, I think that was serve the public, uh, mm -hmm. and, and so far has worked out fairly well. Um, the last thing, I guess, uh, most recent, is the project for the, uh, the computerization of all the cemetery records. And that was been about th three years ago or so, and we're you know, pretty much done with that. Um, 11,000 or so burials have been put in. But the hours that we put in with the volunteers putting those records, digitizing those records, just just astronomical. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, is that that's been primarily you? Primarily, but there's been mm -hmm. other people. But uh, it, it's got to be close to 2,000 hours. Well, it's just a mm -hmm. lot of time. If I had known the amount of time, <laughs> I'm not sure I would have suggested doing that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that's been a Worthwhile. So what's the what's the date of the earliest burial in the database we have now? Seventeen. Uh, I mean, roughly. It yeah. It's in that. Yeah, I don't know. It's in the in, in the O something. Yeah, it's either it's like O nine or seven. It's in it's in that. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could we could pull it up from a report. We could report on virtually everything. Uh, I didn't I didn't do it by. Um, chronological, although I do do every year chronological, so we have a record of how many burials we've had for a year and, and those sorts of things, both here and Clifton, and you know, we wouldn't do it for the, obviously the Pleasant Grove or the, the Grinnell Center. They're not active. Yeah. But they were active. Right, sure. And one interesting thing I learned, which I, I'm not sure I believe the guy uh, at the convention, I went to a workshop about cemeteries, and they said that townships uh, or governments, I guess, in, in total, are not required to take over uh, private 
family cemeteries. Mm. You know, the ones and twos that you know, people bury their kin on the, on the farm out back or whatever, uh, that's basically not any different than the Grinnell Cemetery that we have now, although it's a little bit bigger, I guess. But, um, but we do manage it and maintain it. Hmm? Didn't we uh, Grinnell discover... Uh, I don't know if you want to make some money. I know somebody else. It's, does. Still, it's still kind of hard. Yeah. Guess, but we don't, we don't do well, it. We used to. I mean, we used yeah. to love it and take care of it. You put somebody in the family. I had my senior picture taken lying on one of the. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> um, didn't we discover a, a cemetery that was unknown to us? Um, but the one out on the uh, now agraria property mm -hmm. uh, was marked off on that parcel map as having a cemetery there. But mm -hmm. you know, Margaret and I went out and walked all over the place and couldn't find anything. So it was either never used or it was moved. I think it's right behind the, the house. It's, it's off the road there. I, I found what, a what photograph today, aerial <clears throat> photograph from around 1973 or four that does show a triangle that could, that could include, that doesn't mean it's really there, but could have included the cemetery. Hmm. Well, it's on the GIS maps. There's, there's, a, there's a, a small square that's, you know, in the parcel itself, small hmm. square that's not in the parcel because it's a, but it's not parceled all by itself, but it's the whole thing a cemetery. Mm -hmm. So that may actually be township plane. Actually, <laughs> mm -hmm. although it's private, it doesn't have to be anymore. Well, and of course, we had a cemetery out on Hill Road that was mm -hmm. moved many years ago. Uh, can't think of the name they had for it. I want to say Stevens, but that's the corner, not right. Corner of Hill and Tanyard Road. It's in the woods there. It's more, yeah. up, more up towards this curve. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Straight back in there. They, right. moved, they moved those bodies to Cedarville. Oh, they did? Oh. So it's not there anymore. So no. this leads. Back to last meeting, you brought up the subscribing to the use of software for public access mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. um, Yes and no. I mean, that, that we're going to discuss that. Uh, you know, you you asked to have people to put your uh, you know re, you know refer to the to the information that came back and do mm -hmm. do some research and, and further explore it, which we'll do, but. But, but what it did, Don, was it led me to think about, you know, all the things that we've been working on and the, you know, the philosophy that we have of, of what we're doing. We're not just here to, to fix potholes and well, to bury people. Well, for instance, we have never mentioned party affiliation. Never. Um, we like parties. Yeah. Yeah. We do. But mean celebrations or political parties. <laughs> no, celebrations. We don't I'm like just saying party. that we've never, well, it's never come up. Uh, a pothole mm -hmm. is a pothole. Mm -hmm. Cer certainly, I, you know, at the conference, my first conference of the, the Ohio Township Association, I saw that most townships are, are focused on the, mm -hmm. the bare bones. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been much more creative. Well, I, we have tried. Mm -hmm. um, What's next? Um, that's the fun part about the mm -hmm. job. You don't you don't know what's next until you know that opportunity arises. You know, mm -hmm. It's the cemetery well, that falls in your lap. It's, the, may it's be, the Grinnell Mill that becomes available. We may be in the building at least the next opportunity. Well, that's true. You know, I mean that certainly. I mean, we sell us for a restaurant. Or do we carve out a little corner for historical society, or...? Yeah, well, we've got to... And we need, suppose we need to, this is a topic for the future, mm -hmm. but I have in mind that we want to balance both, uh, you know, fiscal responsibility, and you know, we have to pay our bills, and we have to use public resources uh, thoughtfully, but there may also be a place for some kind of, I don't know, it's Glen Helen related or historical society related and commercial. 
just I'm just throwing that out there for future discussion. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just thinking that uh, I get really tired of uh, trying to find ways to cheapen up the construction of the fire station, the new one, and you know, come. Um, Uh, and high water, um, you know, I, I want to address those issues, whether it's monthly fish fries or, or whatever. I want to raise money as opposed to cutting um, costs by eliminating. We've just we've got three new topics on our agenda. Mm -hmm. Right. Keep in mind, just a little more perspective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we spent uh, virtually every dime that we had in reserve in the general fund mm -hmm. to, to purchase the property out there, 300 plus thousand dollars. Yeah. So this building has to replenish that 300 plus thousand. Mm -hmm. as, as much as I would like to you know, use, you know, be able to use it in some philanthropic manner, Unless we maintain title to it or ownership of it, the only way to get anything out of it is to sell it to the highest bidder, because we can't we can't pick and choose who we how we dispose of the building. We have only we have only one resource, one one option. Well, I mean, you can sell it at an auction, or you can sell it to you know a sealed you know a sealed bid, but you would you know, unless be, you're dealing with a newly created community improvement. Court. Um, it, then you don't have the same rules, perhaps. But as long as the but, newly but but the goal the goal the goal of, of having a reasonable capital gain stands. Right. I, I yeah. agree. No matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to have to yeah we're going to have to address that uh, about a year from now actually mm -hmm. um, pretty much. So uh, that will be it. That will be a challenge, and yeah, we'll have to get all our, we'll have to find somebody in our legal department who knows, <laughs> who knows about uh, real estate law. Okay, so, Daniel? Yes, sir. I don't have much to report for Senator Terry. You haven't been here in two meetings. I know, we haven't had any activity in Senator Terry. No one's died? No one's died? No one's. No, they're all dead. They're already dead. <laughs> I do have ashes coming up on the 16th of March. Clifton. She's already called and set up a dog. Call back to confirm, she said. It's, it's, a, it's on, it's just for sure. Mm -hmm. but that's all that I want to have. I put some gravel on that one drive yesterday. Did you? I know it's a I've got enough to probably do the other one. You know, they're better than we were. They're still a little rough. Once I get everything else done. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for Senator Terry. Mm -hmm. And the road department, I got a few potholes. We're not to road yet, just mm -hmm. don't, don't. Oh, jump we don't the have Senator Terry. Yeah, we're still at Senator Terry. Mm -hmm. Because here's the opportunity for you, know, you to give your opinion or whatever you were going to about what you want to review the bottom proposal. And Oh, okay. You asked yes, for the opportunity to wait, uh, wait for this meeting and review the proposal. I don't think I've done due diligence. Uh, I mean, is this the only software available? I don't know. Um, the this is the only software that's compatible with the online search portion of it. Is that what you mean? Or you I'm mean sure so software itself? Uh, that is, we have we have a database mm -hmm. of material. Uh, if one of my fears is well, there are two sides to it. One is, as I recall, it's a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, a hundred dollars a month. A hundred dollars a month. How many people 
well, two things, how many people are going to use it, and uh, are we really locked in forever? Can we switch to some other service? Can we? Um, I, well, there's a, yes, there's answers to both of those. Um, how many people are going to use it? Don't know, but you know, I think, again, Mark, you, you, know, you hit me, but we're considering this public service. Mm -hmm. um, and we are I locked into it for forever. Yeah. Keep in mind that, yes, $100 a month, but when you think we spend $73 a month to have one cemetery's leaves rate one time a year, we spend $1,500 a month, 12 months of the year, just to mow Glen Forest. Mm -hmm. We spend probably nearly that in addition to, to, to mow Clifton, and we don't mow Glen Quin Pleasant Range. So we have, we have lots of monthly charges. And, and, and the hundred dollars in, in the grand scheme of things, the, mm -hmm. you know, the twelve hundred a year as a as a one time charge, uh, you know, in comparison to all these other fees that we have for things, I don't feel as owners, especially if you, as a Clifton Union Cemetery board member, uh, convince the other Clifton Union Cemetery mm -hmm. board members that it's a you know it's a worthwhile project for them to uh, enter into their. See, they pay 33% of the yearly maintenance charge for the software now. That's the agreement they have. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. potentially, you know, if they want, you know, they're, they're not rich, don't, don't get me wrong, but if they think it's a worthwhile project, you know, they may decide to throw in you know, a portion of that, um, uh, of, the, of that fee, you know, maybe 33%, maybe not quite so much. I don't really know. You'll have to talk mm -hmm. that over with the other board members. Well. I haven't met them yet, but uh, when I burped or paused at the last meeting, I wasn't aware of the magnitude of, of what we have, of the 11, mm -hmm. 12,000. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, as a sort of a resource for local history. I well, acknowledge I mean, that's pretty important. Yeah, I, I think that once the system is in place, that more people will access it than currently. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and and as this for, as for uh, research uh, procedures now. Yeah. Uh, and, and I I see. Uh, it may not have been conscious, but I see this as related to having redone Grinnell Mill, uh, to, and, and maybe this is a theme we could build on, the his, local history as a, as a public service. Mm -hmm. well, so I'll just mention that. Mm -hmm. Well, the Historical Society um, granted us the cost of the software. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually put in a grant request from uh, Community Foundation for us to acquire the software mm -hmm. as, a, as a public service. And that grant was requested, and uh, that's how that was funded. I, uh, I, I'm they not also managed the mill. We we call the Mills Francis Historical oh, with Society. The, yeah, within the source. Yeah, did you know that? We what the 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 Grinnell Mill Foundation is a is a three part ownership, not ownership but man, management I guess between Glenn Helen, ourselves and the Historical Society. I knew there was some kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. I didn't know yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know which partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh well I I would now support uh, going into this contract, okay. and in that discussion, you know, I, I just say I'm interested in uh, this being. It's not a precedent. It's a uh, building on a theme of local history. Mm -hmm. well, open to other opportunities <coughs> and initiatives. Certainly, absolutely. Well, those are. Sorry, I, I was going to say I was I was appalled at at the lack of consistency 
in cemetery records. Uh, you would think that of all the real estate in the world, that cemeteries would be the easiest. But it's not turned out to be that way. We to take the records. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it was, before it was, it's just amazing, Don. When you go to these cemetery association meetings and, you know, that sort of thing, all these cemeteries are all the same. They're, you know, all their, they got some paper map that's all brittle and, you know, some scratches and you know, erased a thousand times. You know, there are the most abysmal record keeping of, it, of any operation in the world well, is cemeteries. One of the um, associations that we contracted with um, were the, it was the, the people who uh, conducted the one day um, maintenance, tombstone maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and when the guy showed us the the tombstone that had sunk straight, I was absolutely amazed. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's things are not as static as one would think. Yeah, that's right. Things move. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing we've <laughs> done over the years. We probably spent, I'm not sure how much money, but spent enough to have about 150 tombstones repaired between here and Clifton. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I don't know. I don't, it's, yeah, it's, it's usually about 3,900, I think. That's what I'm saying. He's been here, been at Clifton three times. Mm -hmm. Here once, I think. Maybe. At least once, yeah. 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 But he's anyway, been, so, well. He's been quite a few. Uh, so last month, Mr. Moocher suggested the board consider an addition to the Pontum software program. Uh, how would we phrase that as a motion? Do we want to write it up for next no, next meeting, or how do you move that we contract with Pontum for the online service? Margaret knows how to write those out. There's uh, so. <laughs> So up front it would be nineteen hundred dollars, and then it would be hundred a month. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's a one-time fee. It's a twelve hundred dollar per year charge. Uh, I move that we uh, go ahead and contract to use the Pontum software program. Okay. For a second. I have a second. Thing. Any further discussion? We none. May we vote, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Mutual? Yes. <laughs> okay, Mr. Road. Oh, no, we got one and more cemetery. I appreciate but... your uh, patience with me. Absolutely. No, no, no problem whatsoever. Happy to be happy to have you. Right. The, the one thing you'll learn in township government, you need a lot of patience. They Those were things incredibly take <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the embracing the concept of government time. Is was new to me. Government and, uh, time. Yeah. I haven't heard that phrase. <laughs> well, government time is different from real people time. I mean, real people have to do things like fill holes, uh, repair a hose. I mean, uh, you need to do that right away. Whereas government, like we meet uh, twice a month. So it's a different uh, space. It's a different uh, concept. Okay, we have our annual bill, which actually goes to uh, the Clifton mm -hmm. Union Cemetery Board, but it's not going to, as much as I know you'd like to have it, like mm -hmm. taking your own little hot hands and mm -hmm. write a check. It's, it's the, our Clifton Union Cemetery Board treasurer is our, also our fiscal officer. So she will receive this invoice and she will be responsible for uh, paying it. Uh, this year it's uh, 9,800 worth of mowing, uh, 2,100 worth of weeding, 3,100 worth of trimming, 513 worth of pouring bases, digging pouring bases, um, 1,000 for uh, Full burials, 
no children burials this, this past year, and 159.54 uh, uh, for two uh, burials of ashes. So total is $16,865.87. Now, in theory, she will send this invoice to Green Township uh, uh, government and uh, to Miami Township government. They don't have to send it. We've already got it. And Green Township government will divide this in half and send us a check for $8,000 plus. And we will write a check for $8,000 plus and we'll deposit it, we'll give it to Margaret, and she'll deposit it in her bank account, uh, and then write us a check for the $16,865.87 for, for the maintenance. Uh, let's not get long-winded tonight, but do you understand the whole concept of the Clifton Union Cemetery and, the, and how it's governed, and who's responsible for it? And uh, not confident, just that it's a shared, <coughs> It is owned. It is owned uh, by both Green Township, Clark County, and Miami Township. But it is managed. It's controlled. And it's open by the Clifton Union Cemetery Board. You, Brian Clem, if he's still this year uh, trustee from Green Township, and um, a member of uh, Clifton Village, who is. Lisa Kimball. Right, Lisa Kimball. <laughs> and the theory is you meet quarterly to discuss uh, things about this. Lisa or Alita? Lisa. Lisa, no way. No way. No way. No way. Yeah. The township governments have no responsibility and no authority to decide what to do with the cemetery. Mm -hmm. The only people that can do that is the board. The only, but the, the township governments are obligated to pay for what the board decides to do. Sounds very baby to me, but that's the way it is. And we've got all kinds of you know legal opinions from the attorney generals of past, Betty Montgomery specifically. So that's where we could put the historical society building. And then we would have to pay for it. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, uh, again, not to get long-winded, but for the past few years, Green Township has decided they're going to be obligated only for uh, the portion of weeding and mowing and, and barrels. Uh, and everything general, else and everything else is on us. Right. They, they haven't been paying for it. Uh, until yeah. now that you're there. That is, they're paying half of the weeding and mowing and, and the mowing. child and, and not paying the in this particular case, the, the three thousand one hundred fifteen dollars and eighty four cents for for general maintenance, trimming, leveling, sweeping, tree trimming, you know, that sort of thing. So we'll see how it goes this year. We'll send this over. We'll see. and it takes a month of Sundays to get paid for it, and then you got to make a bunch of calls, and then the cemetery board's got to meet, and then they got to fight about it. We used to every year meet jointly with the trustees of. Green Township, either here or there, and go over the financial parts of the of the of the operation of the cemetery. Well, once it got to the point where we met and we said, "Okay, here's the deal. We'll split this in half," and they went, "No, we're not paying that." We decided meeting was probably not the best, you know, solution for the next. Uh, so this is a social challenge. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I am no longer get, uh, a registered lobbyist, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough cemetery talk. How about road talk? Okay. Talk to us. We had a few potholes showing us since I had shown the ones that we had. I told you we take a road tour, and I'm telling you, I'm like Pavlov's dog. If we don't have a meeting on a Monday, it just never even occurs to me to, me to go out on a Sunday and, 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 and look at the roads. Never. I don't know what's the matter with me. But anyway, so, so that's why I didn't go, didn't go No, I did not. <laughs> I done a partial this morning. And so we they're showing up. Yeah. And it's, it's the normal weather right now, the moisture and the dry strikes. Yeah. <laughs> so as soon as we get through this wet week, probably next week, I'll be able to let them let it grow. Yeah. But since fixing them. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so that's what we need to take a look. We need to have a tour. If you want to take it to us, I don't think it's necessary. But you just want to look at I kind of like looking at it. <laughs> We've already decided what we're doing this year for road repair, right? We just called. Mm -hmm. We put the hands and chip seal on the list. We put it on the list. So they'll be we'll the next year. How we usually do it. Mm -hmm. We put wedging. 
little bit away from the road. What's the story of Milt Lord planting a tree in a pot? <laughs> well, that was here. When it hadn't yeah. been filled soon enough. Yeah, I think that was that was village. That, yeah, it was in village, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, this is. I don't know which pot hole it was, but I, I didn't hear that. And that it certainly sounds like no. <laughs> It certainly was. Uh, so, what else? Other than that, I'm going to get some gravel for the township garage. That's that a request. good idea. <laughs> so I'll see what I can do. Uh, is, uh, there a limit on, is there a limit on how many tons I can put in? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. By gravel for the garage, you mean it's piled it's there? No. Or, we or we for the drive, the, the parking the garage? Yeah. It now alternates from either being under water or under mud. Take your take your pick. Well, I added. <laughs> you you add it. Add show it. me tomorrow morning. You add the mud part. Yeah. Oh, show me tomorrow morning. People have to show you. You'll know. You'll look at your car after you've driven through. <laughs> and that's better than the uh, openers repaired for the door. That's all right. Okay. Let's move along. This box is report. Mm, not this officer, but we do have. We do have a. Uh, I got it. I got it. Uh, we have a resolution 2018-08. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. already. Whereas, in the process, determine for fiscal year 2018 and whereas it's required to submit all preparation changes made to the 2018 budget, the county auditor. I'm a good fast reader. Now, mm -hmm. therefore, trustees authorize the following changes to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. Fire fund increased by 1,500 repairs and maintenance. General fund increased team travel, uh, excuse me, travel and meetings by 500. Uh, increased other by 50,290. Oh, that's right. We're paying. That's the that's the fire um, capital fund. We're paying uh, uh, off our $50,000 loan on buying the buying the property. Um, that's USDA loan money. Yeah. We can't get reimbursed, that's why we're using it for that. Uh, gas tax, natural gas increased by a thousand, road and bridge, natural gas increased by a thousand, capital fund, 4901. 341,000. Yeah. It's hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> well, she's got this backwards. We should have, you know, the capital fund should have been before the general fund because if the capital fund's not appropriated, you can't spend the, the Fifty thousand out of the one ninety five ninety nine because that's part of the three forty one. But since we're doing it all at once, well, it's all going to be happy to roll uh, into, uh, into one big lump sum. Okay, is there a motion for passage of resolution two thousand eighteen eight? I will make that motion, Mr. Price. Second. Yeah, Mr. Price seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I vote yes. Um, so this is the original, she says. And you are the temporary board secretary. Okay. All right. So is there any other fiscal <laughs> officer business this evening? I don't have any. So we'll go to standing, uh, well, no zoning this evening. We'll go to standing committee reports. Uh, uh, let's see, MBRPC, uh, it was pretty cut and dry, it was a short meeting, it was some transportation services amendments uh, to, to the TIP and the um, projects and some information. Uh, interesting, on the long range planning of the 2050 social economic forecast, that was so dry, but it was kind of interesting, and we had some ride share and executive directors, but the high point of it is, they were taking applications for new officers for the board for 2018, starting in March, and I put my application in, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> come, this come this is your second vice president? This is my second vice president application, yeah. Um, Green County Regional Planning, um, instead of the January one, which I think I mentioned briefly at the last meeting, this is from yesterday, um, we uh, looked at a subdivision review for Nathaniel Grove and Beaver Creek um, and 
the Grand of Sugar Creek, which is interesting if you're familiar with Sugar Creek Township and the general area around where um, the Costco and the, that, all that new development is, there was a Rolandia golf course back there off of Brown Road, uh, right out in the middle of you know nowhere. It used to be out in the middle of nowhere, now it's in the middle of everywhere. And they're redeveloping that whole property into a combination of single family homes, uh, multiple family homes, and in the very center of it is going to be for a, a assisted living type facility. Kind of unique how they've got that plan, but sounds like you They're plugging along, yeah. Um, used to be a big developer out of Columbus shopping scene that was going to do it, but they backed up and somebody else picked it up. So, and uh, so anything from the senior center, Mark? No. And you say, well, you obviously you haven't met with the board yet. No, no, no. Okay. Lifton Union Cemetery Board has not met. And anything from the Economic Sustainability? Um, no. And the mills? Fine. I have, I have been remiss in uh, contacting uh, Mr. Greenberg. And uh, the senior center, um, boy, they, they do a lot of service oriented uh, That's good. activities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there. Public service. So that's good. Uh, the mill, I did do a, a profit loss for 2018, and mm -hmm. the numbers, but there is approximately 20. There's a. Uh, <coughs> the, again, hmm. I could get lost with you, but I will The Grail Mill is uh, overseen by the Grail Mill Foundation. We talked about who those people were. But it is. The, the, the business that's in there is run by the nonprofit Grinnell Mill Foundation Bed and Breakfast, which is a, a subsidiary of the Grinnell Mill Foundation, but it is, it is separate enough that it can make a profit, and that profit can be given back to the foundation, um, whereas if it was a private business in there, they couldn't give back any money to a nonprofit, any of their profits into a nonprofit foundation, uh, other than a very, very small amount, um, like less than three percent of the operating cost. And since, go away. I can wait for the next meeting. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I figured you guys would get long enough. <laughs> uh, and since a hundred percent of the operation funds of the mill and the maintenance fund come from the business that's there. That would have been a no-no if it wasn't a nonprofit. So we figured that out before they found us out, <laughs> and uh, and had this this subsidiary non or subsidiary for-profit foundation established, and so now it can you know, maintain the mill on its profits, which it's doing. And in addition to doing that, they 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 have an obligation to pay the foundation. Two hundred and fifteen dollars per month in a in a maintenance fee, kind of you know a usage fee, uh, depreciation of wear and tear, something like that. And over the years, that fund has uh, grown to about we're at about uh, twenty six thousand uh, dollars. So you know when it comes time for whatever it needs, so um, we call that a maintenance reserve. Yeah, if it needs to be painted or when it needs to be painted the next time. Um, we thought the roof would have to be replaced a couple of years ago and actually had uh, uh, a couple of $3,000 assessments to the mill, to the business, uh, to, to, to put aside to replace the roof, but uh, Jim Hammond doesn't feel that it's deteriorating as fast. He made some adjustments and had some air vents cut in it. Mm -hmm. to, cause Is, it's, isn't it standing seam? Yeah, it was no. rusting from the inside. Right. Well, he got yeah. I would normally I would expect it to last a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. there's moisture in between it and the panel. Uh, the insulated panel. They were trying right. to moisture so you had to get some air to move through there. Yeah, it was it was put on top of the panels as opposed mm -hmm. to put on top of uh, 
furring strips, basically, to allow yeah, moisture to get right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but so far it's, it's, it's holding up fine. He inspects it every once in a while. I'm not sure how he gets up on the inside of there. But he can do a lot Maybe of things. Maybe he flies over. Maybe he does. Yeah. Well, he is, is amazing. Yes, he is. Okay, let's get, uh, let's get to new business here real quick. And we can perhaps meet our uh, deadline. Okay. <clears throat> As I was saying uh, before the meeting started, we have been working, or I have been working, I guess, and I'll take responsibility for that, on, uh, on being reimbursed for Part B of, of Medicare. And uh, I'm certainly not going to get into the whole part of it, but it, it was under the assumption and there were uh, Attorney General's opinions as to whether you could or whether you couldn't, and there was a 2015 opinion and a 2017 opinion, which uh, which contradicted parts of the 2015, and then the ACA got into it, and you know you had to follow ACA guidelines, and blah 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 blah. But the bottom line is, I finally got an opinion from our prosecuting attorney, who's not going to be there very much longer, uh, who says that if we follow the procedure laid out in the most recent attorney general's opinion, I believe it's the most recent one, that. We can uh, we can reimburse ourselves for Part B, and th th those requirements are number one that the township is providing health insurance to all its employees. It's, we're doing that. Number two is we're not limiting any payments of any of those uh, of those uh, benefits. I mean, we can't say, okay, you're only allowed to have five thousand dollars worth of benefits. You, you can't limit because um, Obamacare. You know, a lot of those were unlimited, you know, sorts of things. So we do not do that. Um, and C, oh, you have to, opt, uh, I guess the third one is, you have to opt out. And this happens to be Mark Crockett's opt out, mm -hmm. which you didn't know where it was because it was in my file. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to opt out of the, the, the policy of the township. And that means your sole provider of the uh, of the health care is Medicare. And, and as such, I was under the impression that you had to opt out. You, that's right. Yeah. That's what we did. We opted out mm -hmm. when um, right. Steve Eck was here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you do those three things, then you can be reimbursed for that portion, Part B, of Medicare that is that's taken from your Social Security distribution every month. There's always a, like $132 or something like that. Mm -hmm part for part B. So what I'm saying is, if you want to, I've already done this, if you want to, well Mark's already done it also, if you want to opt out on it, you know, you can then be reimbursed for that amount of money. You don't have to, but, but it's now legal to do that. And I'm suggesting we do that on a yearly basis, as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, every month making Margaret write $330 checks, it doesn't amount to that much. We never see it because it's already taken out. It's not like we're taking it out of our pocket or anything. Right. Well, actually, in my case, I'm not collecting Social Security until I'm 70. Okay. So I'm paying cash every Okay. Then, then in that particular case, if you haven't already done it, bring that quarterly bill in. Mm -hmm. in. You don't have to do this. Okay. Because the township will be paying it directly to Medicare. Mm -hmm. and not going through us. So until you're 70, you won't get into this, that kind of procedure. So this will just be for you if you decide mm -hmm. to do it, and me if yeah. well, I decided to do it. Yeah. So You decide to do it annually? I'm suggesting we do it annually. Yeah. I, I can't, I I can't control that. Sounds, that. sounds great. In some part is operation. There's a resolution to that effect. Where did it come? Maybe in your pile. I didn't see it. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Hmm. We have to wait till next week. I did uh, read the Stephanie Hayden's uh, opinion. I didn't see the resolution.
I know it was attached to her. Yeah, there you go. All right, mystery. We'll have to solve that. Anyway, so we'll do that at the next meeting. Make it official. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Um. Any other uh, new business this evening, gentlemen? John? Nope. Mark? No. Nope. Any old business this evening? No. Mark? Don? <laughs> I keep, everybody gets a chance. <laughs> Should I make a motion? You, you, you shall. I, I would uh, make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. How did it go this long with <laughs> nobody here? <laughs> all right, I, I'll second it, and all in favor, aye. Aye. Aye.